Hello chess fans, this is Rick from Chess to Impress with number 122 in this series, Viewers Games. We will also make a new move in the game between myself against the Chess to Impress viewers. If you would like your game to be analyzed on Chess to Impress, then you can send it to me by email to classroomchess64 at gmail.com. In this video, it is the turn of Arif. Hey Rick, I'm Arif from Indonesia. If you not know where it is, my country hosts the last Asian Games in Jakarta, Palembang. Maybe I'm the first Indonesian in viewers game. Disclaimer, this is my first long letter in English and I'm sorry if bad English. Rick, your channel is very great. I learn a lot from the very best players in the world in your videos. Some playlists get me better and thank you for this playlist because we as an amateur or chess enthusiast will learn and get correction from your perspective. Let's move to the game. This game was played in Jogjakarta, Indonesia called Piala Raja Jogia. It was the second round and I had a minus from a silly fork blunder in the first round. I hope you and the viewers can enjoy my game. Lesson learned, don't take too fast for one move. It's a classical game, 90 minutes. Use the time wisely. Peace and love to you all and Happy New Year to you, says Arif. Let's have a look at Arif's game. It was an over-the-board game. It's always nice to analyze an over-the-board game instead of a blitz game that was played online. It was a second round, as Arif said. He had lost the first round, so he wanted to get into the tournament. He was white and his opponent was Suito and Arif opened with a knight. And he said, I start with knight f3 because I love this opening. d5 from Subito, d4 from Arif, bishop f5, c4, e6, e3, and c6. Like I set up the semi-slav with his light squared bishop already outside of the pawn chain. This often is a problem piece for black, so the fact that it's outside of the pawn chain can be seen as a small success for black. On the other hand, sometimes that bishop is missed on the queen side. Sometimes moves like queen b3 are possible with pressure against b7. But Arif played knight c3 on the fifth move. Knight f6. And here there are many grandmaster games with this position. And they all play the knight to h4 to get the bishop pair. But Arif does not play knight h4. He plays bishop e2. h6. Now the bishop can hide on h7 in case knight h4 is played. Arif castled, bishop d6, h3, knight b to d7, and b3. And Arif says that he wants to fianchetto his bishop in this closed position. Black castled, there goes the bishop on the long diagonal. Rook e8, rook e1, bishop g6, and queen c1. And Arif says, I thought I can push the C pawn. And you can indeed, but you can also do that without moving the queen to C1 first. C5 immediately is also possible. It's not clear if the queen on C1 is better than on D1. But it's not a big problem. It's a bit of loss of time, but the position is so closed that time is not really a big factor. Rook C8, and there goes C5. Bishop drops back, and b4, Arif is going to play on the queen side. And now e5 from his opponent, a classical and good response, countering in the center when your opponent plays on the wing. Now we see some trades on e5. Bishop takes, and now f4, kicking that bishop back. Bishop b8 and queen d2, and Arif says, I don't know who is better in this position. Well, I do know because I have the engine running and black is somewhat better because of the weakness of the e3 pawn. That's a weak pawn and can easily be attacked by black's pieces. Bishop f3, and here queen d7 is logical followed up by rook c e8, putting pressure on the e3 pawn, but black plays his queen to a different square, queen c7. Not the most logical square for the queen, but not a mistake either. 
Rook AD1, Rook CE8, and now Queen D4, setting up a strong battery with Queen and Bishop. And now a very strange move from Black. He played a Rook back to D8. And Arif says, two moves by a Rook, that is bad, right? Well, it is bad, but also it's very illogical to put the Rook on the D file. It was on the E file, it was just played there a move ago, putting pressure on the half open file against the weak E3 pawn. And I don't understand the idea behind the Rook back to D8. So Vito will need to explain this, what he had in mind with his move. G4, and now Arif is going to play on the king side. He said he sees the weak point on G7, and he thinks to attack that with all his pieces. Good idea. Good plan. Knight E8, Rook E2, and F5, and that is a hook that gives White some possibilities to open up lines against Black's king. Rook g2, here Arif talks about the time control. He says the time control was 90 minutes with a 30 second increment, and this is the first move made under 60 minutes. So Arif still had a lot of time on the clock. He said, I, I thought after rook g2, I can press the g file, even though Subito defends it three times. I think he's talking about a g7 pawn, which is defended actually four times, also defended by the king, but this is a nice diagonal against g7, and Arif wants to put his rooks on the g-file and really put pressure against that g7 point. Bishop h7 from black. Black's last three moves made with a piece have all been quite passive. He's going back with his pieces. Black clearly does not know what to do in this very complex position. Arif, however, plays with a clear plan. And his position is getting better and better. Knight e2, queen d7, and knight g3. Improving that knight, also bringing the knight to the king side. It can jump to h5 and also put pressure on the g7 pawn. Queen e6, attacking the e3 pawn now with queen and rook. It's only defended by the queen. So king f2 to defend the e3 pawn, and also make room for that rook to come to g1. Very logical and strong play from Arif. Here the engine says it's not so bad for black. He can take on g4, and after bishop takes g4, there is queen f7, and black is okay according to the engine. But after king f2, black played rook d to d7. And that's not a good move. Rook dg1, very logical. King f8, and now Arif opens the g file. G takes f5. Bishop takes, and knight h5. Arif says, I think it is a bad move, but my record says it only took 18 seconds. He says, I didn't know what came to my mind at this time. Well, Arif, knight h5 is not a bad move at all. It's a very logical move, putting more pressure on g7, opening up the g file for the rooks. It is a good move. And now Subito panics. He plays g5, double question mark. Arif says Subito reduces his clock to 44 minutes, but I mark this move as a blunder. And that is correct. It's a very panicky move. Like the move f7, f5 was a few moves ago. Black clearly felt under pressure and lashed out with a pawn move, which in fact makes things worse for him. Queen h8 is the best move in the position, and I replayed it. King f7, and now a very dramatic moment. Arif is winning, but he has to deal with one obvious threat that Black has, which is queen takes e3 check. The move bishop d4 is good enough and white is winning, but Arif only saw his own attacking plans and did not see his opponent threat. He took on g5 and he said bad move or blunder, because now there is a check made in two moves from black. But black didn't see it, said Arif, and also I didn't see it too, because what can I do with this diagonal? So I took the pawn and start to exploit the king side. I forgot the defense. But maybe my lucky day, he didn't see it, 
and took only three seconds, yes, three seconds to move. And after three seconds, black played d4. And he could have won the game on the spot with queen takes e3 check, king f1 only move, and this is checkmate. Not very difficult, but black didn't see it. He was still in panic mode, he played d4 instead. And now after bishop takes d4, Arif says, I just realized my mistake. Phew, I escaped from checkmate. And indeed, now the bishop was on d4, protecting the e3 pawn, and now white is winning. Black took his only chance. Here he played the best move. Rook takes d4, an exchange sacrifice, giving the rook for this very strong bishop. Of course, he can't take with the pawn because of the same mate in two combination. So Arif took with the queen. And now the queen is defending the e3 pawn. Black took on a2 with check. Bishop interposed. Bishop e5. Suddenly, black plays some active moves, but it's too late. He's already lost. Arif swapped the queens with queen c4 check. Queen takes, bishop takes check, king g6. And Arif really plays this very well. He's an exchange up, and he still has an attack against black's king, and he really plays very well in the coming moves. Knight f4 check, king drop back, and g takes a6 with check. Double check, both the rook and the pawn are giving check. King takes, rook g5, attacking the bishop. Bishop takes f4, and e takes f4. Knight g7, protecting the bishop. Bishop e2, rook f7, bishop f3, bishop c2, and rook 1 to g4 with a checkmate in two moves strat. The threat is rook h4, and you can only interpose the knight, and when the knight will get taken, and that will be checkmate. So that's the threat. Black saw it, drop back with the king to h7, so the king can escape that way. h4, Harif keeps going forward with his troops. Bishop f5 hit the rook. Rook drop back and is going to be rerouted as Harif writes. Rook d7, king e3, a check, king drop back, rook drop back to defend the knight, which is the attacked by both rooks. Rook d1, offering a trade of rooks, rook check, king f2, and rook f7, and there the rook infiltrates over the d file. Is your back? Bishop e4 check, Arif is attacking the black king with all his pieces. King g8, king f3, king f8, bishop g6 attacking the rook, rook step to side, and rook check, king g8, and we're almost there, h5. The pressure is becoming too big for black to survive this. 96 and bishop f7 check. A very nice check. Another double check. Both the bishop and the rook are giving check. If there's a double check, you can only move the king. King h7 and bishop g8 check. What's the last move of the game? Here black resigns. It is a mate in two. King h8 is the only move. And then there is rook h6 check. The rook has to interpose. And this is checkmate on the 60th move. Arif said, after this round, I rested well with one and a half points from two games at that time. I think you got one point from two games, right? Because you told us that you lost the first round with a fork. So you got one point from two games at this time. But anyway, it doesn't matter. But Wednesday was a bad day for me. Zero points from two games and I lost because of positional play. Maybe I can share with you someday later and I can learn from your perspective. Thank you. Terima Kashi, that is probably thank you in Indonesian, I presume, says Arif. Thank you very much, Arif, for sharing this game. Your English is not bad at all. It's much better than my Indonesian. I was able to understand everything you wrote. So that is the purpose of language, isn't it? To be understood. And the fact that your English is not perfect is no problem at all. And well played. This was a great game. You played really well. 
One blemish is, of course, missing that mating tool. You were too focused on your own attack and you took your eye off that one threat that Black had. It was also interesting to see how Black reacted when you start to build up your attack on the king side. He made it easier for you by panicking, by throwing his pawns forward, f5 and g5, by playing his pieces back, knight e8 and bishop h7, that made the attack easier for you. But as I always say, attacking is easier than defending. And in this case, Black did not know how to react to you slowly building up a very threatening attack. He panicked and that made it easier for you. But you played it really well. Once Black was forced to sacrifice an exchange, you played the final part of the game very, very strongly. Well done, Arif, and thank you very much for sharing this game so I could share it with the Chester and Press community. And from Arif's game to our game, this is the game of myself with white against the chest to impress viewers with black. On the 28th move last week, I took a pawn on c5 with my queen, and it was your turn. What did you play here? Let's have a look. 16 viewers submitted a move, and the winner is bishop g7 to e5, which was voted for six times. Five players wanted to play the rook back to d7. Knight d7 was voted for twice. Rook takes d5 was voted for by funny animator Jin TV, who more or less has given up on this game. I think he said, he wrote that he is going to get two pieces for the queen that way. Bishop takes h3 was voted for once, and one viewer wanted to resign here. So bishop g7 to e5 is your 28th move. So let's put a move on the board. Bishop g7 to e5, attacking my bishop on f4. I don't really have time to take on c8 because then I'm losing that bishop. So I'm going to take on e5. I think my move is forced. The bishop takes e5 is my 29th move. And now it is your turn again. What would you play here for black? You can take part in this game by putting your 29th move for black in a comment section underneath this video. By doing so, you will be in the raffle. At the end of the game, I will raffle a chess book amongst the viewers who have taken part in this game. So I'm looking forward to seeing your move in the comment section. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to the Chess to Impress channel and please leave a comment. I will read them all and I will reply to them all. If you like the video, if you like the viewers game series, then please share it on social media by clicking the share button on YouTube. The link to the playlist of the viewers game series is in the description box of this video. You can find me on Instagram, on Twitter and on Facebook. This is Rick for Chess to Impress. Thank you for watching.